Hey, IT uh, and social media, we pray that everyone is doing well. Uh, wasn't that such a powerful, awesome word preached by Reverend Maria? He is king. Uh, again, um, those who, uh, this is our sermon chat where we take questions right after Lord. the sermon. And um, those, uh, please download our church app the Emmanuel Temple where you'll see the sermon notes there uh, and um, we are excited about an opportunity uh, to share in this time. Reverend Marie. Good morning everybody. I pray that everybody is blessed and celebrating this Palm Sunday with great joy. God is good and we're grateful for an, another opportunity to, to share with you. So please go ahead and send your questions, post your questions. We want to talk and chat and discuss. We will pray. Whatever you need, let's engage right now in the presence of our God. Let's have a word of prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for this day. We thank you, God, for another opportunity to share with uh, persons all over this world. Uh, we ask that you would uh, use us, God, that we may calm fears and anxieties, God. We thank you for um, using these frail, uh, fickle, uh, fleshly creatures called Maria and John that we may bless your people. We ask it in Jesus' name, amen. All right, this is our time for questions. Uh, so please uh, share. Uh, we are here uh, for the next few moments uh, taking your questions. It is Palm Sunday, um, traditional Sunday where we celebrate uh, Jesus entering Jerusalem. Um, uh, as we begin Holy Week, uh, we've called it this year our road to resurrection. Uh, and so we're here taking questions uh, from anyone about uh, not only a uh, uh, sermon today, but faith questions that you may be having, you may be struggling with um, today. You know, Pastor, as I was preparing for the, the sermon, and as I said in the sermon, I really was trying to think about and pray about, Lord, on another Palm Sunday, um, what, what is it in this text that I didn't see? And I was amazed to see the, the way that the issue of, of unbelief spread, how you had people who were very much um, enamored with Jesus and ready to follow Jesus so much even to make and proclaim him as their king and yet there was that kernel of disbelief that place as I said in the sermon where the hosts the Pharisees they did not believe and they were able to spread that virus of disbelief throughout the crowd and it just spoke to me in such a powerful way because as we are dealing with this virus right now you know, we have been going through stages of how to deal with it, how seriously to take it. You know, I think that we, as the country and actually as the world, people have been really struggling with how do we battle something that we can't see or feel necessarily when it is attacking us. And what a powerful way to think about unbelief and how unbelief attacks our faith when we're not even realizing it. And so I'm hoping that somebody was blessed by the sermon. I'm hoping that we will be diligent in guarding our hearts and, and guarding our spirits. Um, and how do you protect yourself and inoculate yourself from unbelief? Well, one of the best ways is to, to be among believers and to share in the word of God and good preaching and all of those things help fortify us and build us up and to also increase our faith. We do have a question that's come in, and the question is, why is it important? Why was it important for Jesus to enter Jerusalem on a donkey? That's a really good question. One of the things that, um, that the scriptures had foretold in talking about this great messianic king who would come and deliver the people of God into a new realm beyond uh, the realm of of sin and death in this world, but into the kingdom of God, 
there were many different things in scripture that were foretold that would help the people of God recognize when this Messiah had come on the scene. One of them found in the um, book of Zechariah, the writings of the prophet Zechariah, was that the Messiah would come in on a donkey's colt. And it was important for Jesus, the living word of God, to manifest every detail that had already been foretold about the Messiah. And so that particular detail, when Jesus made his plans to enter Jerusalem, to enter the crowd and actually command the attention of the crowd, that was one of the details of scriptures and the prophecy of scripture that he was careful to, uh, to follow through with. The mm -hmm. other blessing of scripture is that if you look back through what the Old Testament foretells and what unfolds in the Gospels, you'll see that even when people didn't realize it, they were fulfilling scripture. Even when the Pharisees were doing what they were doing, they were doing it in the fulfillment of scripture. And it's just a blessing of God how the God as king and Jesus as, as our messianic king operates in a way that even when those are not with him, are doing what they're doing, it all coordinates in the way that God foretold it would be and according to God's purpose. So somebody ought to say God is sovereign. God is sovereign. I think also adding to your question, um, adding to your response, um, Reverend Maria, um, the, um, the question about the significance of Jesus coming into the city, the way he came into the city, um, the children of Israel were looking for a, a king who was going to come in and overthrow the government. And Jesus, uh, they really didn't, hadn't been paying attention to what Jesus was saying throughout the course of his life uh, about the kingdom of God and completely trying to flip the script. And so here it is. Uh, he's not coming in on a, uh, a colt. I mean, he's not coming in on a horse. Um, like a king would be coming into the city. He's coming in on a meek and mild animal, uh, coming in, uh, showing them that uh, what they thought was right was not right. And also, um, they came in throwing palm branches and crying, uh, 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 Hosanna. Hosanna, blessed is he who comes. Uh, and so um, that that's important um, about we had to get all of these things, as Reverend Maria just said, were prophecy being fulfilled. Things that were already written, and Jesus actually bringing them, um, showing them right in front of their eyes. But oftentimes, we miss the obvious, uh, and that's why um, we always look for uh, small details um, that show. Uh, because if we miss details. Uh, we miss major things. Uh, I never thought about, you know, when you were preaching the sermon, I was like, hmm, I never thought about um, how that small piece at the end completely just opens up the entire rest of the passages you were preaching. So I, I was blessed by the sermon. Amen. We have a follow-up to that question, and it is, what applications can we make for our lives? This follows up to the question about um, why was it important for Jesus to enter on a donkey? I think that... Um, what Jesus illustrates for us is that um, all of us have some sort of calling on our lives and all of us who are believers have gifts and talents and um, callings and missions and, and, and work to do that the Lord has called us to do. And we need to know who we are in Christ. We also need to know, and the word helps us to understand how to utilize our giftings and our talents according to God's word. Now, you're not gonna open up the Bible and turn to a passage that says, Maria, you go do this. But if you know the God of the word and you're in relationship with the God of the word and you know the word and read the word, God in your spirit will connect what he specifically has for you to do to fulfill your calling and the work that he has for you to do and give you guide, guidance through the word of God as well as through his direct contact in prayer 
So it is important for us to follow Jesus' example, not that we're going to all just jump up on donkeys. I know, Pastor, in the past, we have had some pastors who will, who will reenact my, that my. fabulous moment. My, my. But we don't, we're not literally going to just all jump on donkeys, but what we will do is know who we are in Christ, know who we are and what God's plan for us is, and we will use the word, both Old and New Testament, because there are some people who shy away from the Old Testament, but we will use the scripture to help guide us as mm -hmm. God speaks to our hearts and continues to talk with us and walk with us individually uh, through prayer and study. Uh, the next question was, how do we not become like the crowd following Jesus for the wrong reasons? Well, um, I think, are we following, uh, I think I said this in Bible study, either this Tuesday or the last Tuesday, do we want God or do we want the things from God? And oftentimes we have to balance ourselves uh, to make sure that we're not chasing things we can get from God um, more than we're chasing God. Um, um, Matthew says, if we seek ye first his kingdom and his righteousness, then all of these other things will be added unto us. Um, God wants to be primary in our lives. And if we seek him first, then God, in God's own time, as Reverend Maria said, because God is sovereign, uh, God is in charge, God will give us the things that God wants to give us at the time God wants to give us I give them give them to us so and another important part about it that is it's not that our wants are always wrong we have many wants and desires and many of our wants and desires are actually given to us they're part of naturally who God has made us to be what becomes a problem is when our desires supersede the one who is sovereign over all, when they become central to our lives, when our desires are what drive us and we want them when we want them, how we want them, when we want them out of order, when we want them outside of the way the teaching and wisdom of God tells us that we should experience them. Experience them. So we have different drives and we have different desires, but then when they turn into what the Bible calls lusts, when it, which really just means an over desire, something that is compelling us into, well, compelling us outside of God's way and God's will. That's what the problem is. So I just want to echo what you said about really keeping them in balance, keeping them in order. And the way we do that is, again, staying in touch with the Lord. We know if we are paying attention, if we are prayerful, and if we care, because a lot of times we, the Lord will speak to us, move on our hearts, and we will move the opposite direction because we've allowed an over desire to take over us. But if we be still and know that he is God, he's always there, always directing his people in the way that we should go. We have to pause and listen. We have to pause and be obedient. And when we don't, we have to know to go back to the Lord, acknowledge what we've done, and seek the forgiveness that is ours and also his grace, which is God's power to do what we can't do for ourselves. We need to seek his grace in those places where our over-desire has defeated us many times. Um, see the question here. How do you handle improper thoughts and fears after a great loss when you're hurting? Um, I think one of the things that's going to come out of this um, pandemic is we have to acknowledge um, that we're grieving. Um, we're grieving. Um, People not only losing their lives, losing their jobs, losing family members, losing um, their life as they knew it. Um, so the first thing we have to do is acknowledge that we're grieving. Um, then um, th there are stages of grief um, that one must go through. Um, and I think, um, again, I said this earlier um, at the end of the service that um, one of the things that Reverend Maria is big on, I'm not a journaler, but she's a, a journaler, and she's even told her girlfriends if something happens to her, come, come get to the em. house come and get, get all em. her journals uh, and get them away because there's a whole lot of stuff about me in there. Uh, no, I'm just playing. Um, stuff in there that I can't read. Um, and in uh, almost 18 years, I've never touched her journals. Amen. Um, and so I respect that. And so one way is to write um, down how you're feeling because whether we understand or not, journaling is prayer. If prayer is simply talking to God and writing out our feelings is a way to talk to God, God can handle it. 
God can handle our, our pain, our anxiety, our frustration, our fears, our doubts, our worries. The problem is we talk to everyone else about all of those things instead of talking to God. Right, and I would also say that, and we talked about this last week, um, if you don't use a journal, and it can be a very powerful tool, you can talk to God in lots of different ways. And the, the important thing is to talk to God. And some people may sing. And even if you can't, even if you are not... A real singer. A, a real vocalist, hallelujah somebody. You can still, the Bible gives you license to make a joyful noise to the Lord. So one of the things that can do um, when you have those improper thoughts or even those fears, and and those things can happen, particularly in those moments of vulnerability after a loss, after a, a in those moments of grief. You can sing, you can make up a song, you can um, sing and use a song that you've already uh, heard or that someone else, else has recorded. And there's nothing wrong with putting that on pause and making that your prayer to the Lord. I mean, putting that on, um, on repeat, repeat and making that your prayer to the Lord or singing out loud to, to the Lord and making up your own song. You can, prayer is simply communi having communication with God and there's many different ways to do it. But the point is to do it. The point is to understand that in those moments of vulnerability, um, you will not be able on your own to fix what's broken in your heart. Jesus came to, to mend the brokenhearted. So the important thing is, number one, give yourself permission to acknowledge that you feel that way and share that in God's presence. And number two, to invite God's healing power and God's presence to, into your heart because Jesus never, ever forces his way. And if you're a believer, the Holy Spirit is already resident inside of you. The Holy Spirit knows what you're going through. What we need to do as believers is to turn ourselves and our attention to what God has already done for us. So Palm Sunday is a great opportunity. Holy Week is a great opportunity to remember that whatever crucifixions we have gone through, whatever pains, whatever um, Good Friday moments we experience, even the ones we're experiencing now, this is a week like no other to remind us that there is a resurrection Sunday morning coming. And even if you don't feel the power and the blessing of your heart being healed right now, you can look to the hills from whence cometh your help. You can look to what God has done in Christ Jesus and celebrate that and watch and see how the Lord will minister to your heart when you acknowledge that he is king. And regardless of what's going on right now in my life, he is king. And so I look to my king to continue to not only do what he's doing and has done for eternity, but to do it in my life right now. Because he is able. He really is able. Yes, ma'am. So this is our sermon chat um, following our 730, our first worship experience. <clears throat> Uh, where we're taking questions about sermon, he is king. Uh, sermon notes are in uh, our app, the Emmanuel Temple. Um, uh, we do this after both services um, for a few moments um, to, uh, to connect with everyone, uh, so that uh, questions um, may be answered, um, that we can dialogue, we can discuss, um, and so we're glad that you worship with us virtually. Um, we're gonna take one more question. And then we'll see you again at the 10 a.m. Uh, service, after the 10 a.m. service. Which one do you want? This How do you walk around as a believer and not show fear when your faith is strong? Think of, particularly for those who are still um, working, who are essential workers, postal workers, UPS, um, Amazon now, um, uh, FedEx, um, grocery store, transit workers. Um, we have several member who work, members who work for uh, Miami-Dade Transit, and they're and they're getting very apprehensive, um, along with healthcare professionals. Um, whatever, um, whether it's hospital, nursing home, um, assisted living facilities, and so one of the things that we're not going to tell you to do is not to. Uh, we're not going to tell you that um, what you're feeling is, is not real. It is very real. Um, your pain, your anxiety, your, your fear 
your doubts. Um, uh, but the good news is God can transform those things and strengthen you so that you can be a billboard, a walking billboard to those around you uh, that uh, I'm not going to let fear uh, dictate uh, my faith. So it could be um, whether a formal way that you gather some people who are feeling the same way you do and you all decide, hey, then we're going to get on a prayer line. Uh, we're going to call each other and we're going to pray together before we start our work day. Then we're going to end each day with prayer. Um, we're going to send each other um, motivational scriptures. We just came out of uh, our series, Trust in Troubled Times from Psalm 91. We talked about last week about several passages of scripture uh, that you can read. Uh, here is a great opportunity for our faith and our walk with the Lord to increase. Because oftentimes our walk with the Lord does not grow in good times. We need fertilizer. We need stuff, bad yeah. stuff yeah. around us mm -hmm. that forces us to grow. And here is God has allowed bad stuff, things that we don't like, things that we don't even can stand and we're struggling with it. And so the question is, uh, as I quoted one time, uh, are we going to allow pain uh, to produce power? are we going to allow because God does not waste a crisis All right. yeah I think that um, a couple weeks ago maybe a month or more ago I preached about the woman with the issue of blood and I talked about how this, the scripture basically says that she kept saying over and over again if I but touch the hem of his garment I will be healed and I talked about how that in itself basically was meditation saying something over and over again repeating a truth that is real it's especially powerful when you're repeating a truth of scripture. And so one of the things that a believer can do to maintain um, t as you walk around and to evidence to others that your faith is strong, well, let's just say the fact that you're out there and, not, um, and doing those essential jobs is to me a very powerful statement of faith. But also, as you're doing that, you can strengthen yourself. Um, we talked last week about breath prayer and just meditating on the truths of God. Um, Again, scripture allows us um, truth to take hold of, truth to pray back to God, truth to remind ourselves, our hearts, and those around us. So I think that walking by faith and exercising our faith in the walking, um, faith is like a muscle. It must be exercised. And to Pastor's point, crisis times are times when the faithful um, get busy exercising their faith. So. Um, keep on walking in the truths of God, rehearsing those truths through meditation and prayer, gathering virtually with other believers. I'm part of several different um, text chains right now of people who are praying and encouraging one another. And just think about that. Think about how before this we may have a, allowed Sunday morning worship, many of us allowed Sunday morning worship to be the only time that we thought about sharing with others in our faith or we thought about being intentional in our faith. Think about how this experience through this pandemic has forced many of us to step outside of that and to be talking about the Lord and his goodness, sharing that with others throughout the week. And what a blessing that that is. So all of these things I think, and I hope will help um, answer that question about how to walk around as a believer um, and not showing fear, but showing that your faith is strong. Okay, um, thank you for worshiping virtually with us at 7.30 service. We will um, share back in the sermon chat at the ten, after the 10 a.m. worship experience. Uh, don't forget, um, you can go back and um, worship virtually again with us um, from the Tuesday night um, teaching um, um, from last Sunday in our Trust in Trouble Time series, the last couple of Sundays. And uh, we'll be... Um, um, sharing in a Good Friday noon service at uh, on Friday, um, and I'm excited about um, what God is going to move. And then I am looking for transit workers, looking for persons on the front line, postal workers, FedEx workers, um, uh, persons uh, who still having to go to their offices. Um, we've got 500 bottles of oil. Uh, if you would just uh, text the church at the Emmanuel Temple at AOL.com. Um, 
Friday at uh, 1 p.m. We're going to be outside with our mask and our gloves, um, giving out oil. Uh, and then when we run out of that oil, um, we'll get some more. So if you want to sow a seed to help us be a blessing, you can always do it at the uh, dollar sign, the Emmanuel Temple. Uh, also on our the website, Cash App, cash app uh, on our website, VIT.org, and our app, The Emmanuel Temple. Uh, thank you, Reverend Maria, for reminding us. Or you can mail a good check uh, to 7040 Pines Boulevard, mm -hmm. Pembroke Pines, Florida, 33024. Uh, we thank you for your faithfulness, your commitment to support uh, VIT. Uh, as you know, we are in a Love Out Loud campaign to provide 1,000 journals for every employee at the Jackson North Hospital uh, so they can write until it hurts and then write until it heals. Uh, thank you again. Um, Reverend Maria, you want to close us in prayer? Lord, we're grateful for the blessings of this day and how you continue to show that you are Emmanuel, God who is with us. We thank you for the blessing of this Palm Sunday and we thank you for the revelation from Scripture that helps us to see that we too are walking with you in this journey to Jerusalem. Help us, O oh God, to continue to exercise our faith and look to you, O oh Lord, and to trust that there is a resurrection Sunday morning in all of our lives and in all the difficult situations that we face. We pray your covering, O oh God, on all essential workers. We pray your covering, O oh God, mm -hmm. on those who are right now um, wondering if they are, are contracting or have contracted uh, the virus. We pray your covering right now, oh God, on those who are journeying through to their healing right now in the name of Jesus as they battle this dreaded uh, pandemic. And we ask your blessings on this country and this world, oh God, that we would look more to your guidance and your wisdom and allow you to take us to the other side of this this pandemic that we can say that it was no one but you, God, mm -hmm. who brought us through. In Jesus' name, we pray it all, and we thank you for those who joined us. Amen. Amen. See those uh, you who want to worship virtually at 10 a.m., and then we'll be right back here after the 10 a.m. worship experience. Uh, take care. God bless. Praise God.